Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take another look at our P6 practice. This video is going to focus in on our copy products. This video is a part of a larger series of videos that focuses on our P6. This particular P6, which might be different from yours, is focusing in on how to read in a CSV file and put it into an array of structures and then ultimately modify it, search it, sort it, et cetera. And specifically, this video is going to focus in on the copy products, which is going to be somewhat of a convenience function, much like our display products was that we covered earlier. The idea is that the copy products function will allow for you to copy a subset of elements from one array of structures to a second array of structures. And so to begin with, let's take a look at the function signature. You'll notice that there is a constant product property sources. The idea is that that is not the one that we want to modify, but instead there is the product properties destinations, which will ultimately be the ones that we do modify. And then we also pass a indices variable that is an integer array. The idea is that it holds the integer indexes in the sources that wish to be copied to the destinations. And then we have a couple of additional variables here, our N and our M. The N is sort of a safety variable, if you would. The idea is that it is going to make sure that none of the indexes are greater than the actually allocated portion of our sources array so that we don't end up accidentally reaching into a part of memory that we didn't mean to. The M is going to correspond to the indexes. In other words, we want to know how many indices there were that we actually want to copy over. And so ultimately, then what we want to do is we want to use this copy products to drive the copy product function. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to copy and paste this particular function signature, and we'll put it down, uh, down near our copy product because essentially, again, it's going to pretty much be using it here uh, much in the same way that our display products runs our display product. And again, the thing to note here is that this is plural. The attention is, is that if it's plural, it's meant to operate on an array or some other more advanced data structure. Now, um, much like our other functions, we're going to go ahead and set this up with our int results. We're going to initialize our results equal to exit success because we're optimists, and we're going to return our results. Now, at this point, what we want to do is some very basic error checking. Um, the idea here is that we want to make sure, for instance, that our sources are not null. And so sources equal to null, basically, we have a problem, so print F error, please provide valid sources. And then again, with a new line, and then as always, results equal to exit failure. Now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do a little more copying and pasting here, because this pattern of validating our input arguments should feel pretty comfortable to you at this point, because we've been doing it quite a bit. Um, we follow this up then with an else if, and we do the same thing now with our destinations. And if our destinations are equal to null, since we're still dealing with statically declared memory, there's really not a lot we can do here other than just simply let the user know there is a problem. And then else if, we want to check to see that our indices are not equal to null. And please provide the valid indices. And at this point, then what we want to do is we want to set up some variables that allow for us to loop through the sources and essentially just copy using our copy product function from the source to the destination. Now, there are a couple of things that we want to do here. 
we want to keep track as we loop through our sources copying into our destinations. And we also want to make sure that one of the individual copies also does not fail. So in other words, we're not going to do this with a for loop. We're actually going to do this particular example with a while loop. Now, the idea is that I need to do a couple of things. Number one, I want to check to make sure that I didn't accidentally exceed the size of the sources array when attempting to reach in to the sources array. So we're going to need to check to make sure our int n. Uh, arguably, we could make a quick check here, make sure that it is, in fact, not less than zero. So, for instance, here, uh, we'll check to see if our int n is less than zero. And again, probably provide then a message. Please provide a non-negative n. Again, if we write our logic correctly in our else, we'll still catch these problems. Uh, let's go ahead and create one more local variable here. We're just going to call it index. And the idea then is, is my index is going to be equal to zero. And I'm going to set up a compound condition in our while loop. So while results are equal to exit success and our index is less than our M. And notice it's going to be less than, not less than or equal, because we do not need to include the M. But basically, that's going to control when our while loop stops. And then what we can do is we can simply have a check to see using the indices. So if indices square brackets index is less than our n, we will attempt to make the copy. And the way we do this is we simply say results equal to copy product. In this case, we're going to pass first the source. So in other words, sources, square brackets, and we use, much like what we saw in the earlier video, we're actually going to use our indices array, square brackets index, that tells us which element out of the sources we wish to copy to our new destinations array. And the important thing to remember is that with both of these, that you're actually passing the address of these structures. Even though the first one is constant, we still pass the addresses, not the structures themselves. Now note what's going to happen here. If for some reason our copy product fails, it will set the results variable to exit failure, which is going to kick us out of the while loop. So we basically have two reasons to get kicked out of the while loop. Either our exit success is no longer true, or that we have successfully looped through all of the values in our array. And the last step, of course, that we need to do is simply increment our index. So now what we have is we have a little helper function that will replace then the need for this in our main. In other words, what we will reduce is the amount of duplicate code. Now, I'm not going to be able to really test this one in isolation. Um, you'll have to watch the later videos that focus in on the name and the type because I'm going to use it and combine it with another trick that will allow us to greatly simplify the amount of code that we have in our main. So as always, hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And thank you for watching.